Welcome to episode two of the vlog. Today I'm going to show you what it's like being a freelance photographer here in Florida. You'll get to see how I prepare for my shoots, like creating a shot list, what gear I bring, and seeing what my editing process is like. So let's get started. To start off, I'll be working on my shot list in a nice little coffee shop I want to try out, which happens to be located next to this hauntingly themed Dracula Bistro. After grabbing my drink, I draft my shot list in good notes. That way I have a clear plan and I'm well prepared for the shoot. Each shoot will be different and will have its own specific needs. In this case, I'm doing event photography, so I'll need shots that will cover the entire event and highlight key elements. I like using the Cornell style of notes for my shot list as if I have any ideas or important details I need to add, I can write them on the left side and bottom of the page. With my shot list done, it's time to open up my camera bag and go through everything I'll need for the shoot. I'll even create an additional list, which is my gear checklist for the event. Doing this not only helps me prioritize what gear I need, but also helps me keep track of what I bring with me on location. I know exactly what I have and what I'll be using that day. I will also keep a copy of my shot list on my phone so that it's with me come photo day and I can easily reference it when need to. Overall, these organization tactics help me be well prepared so that I'm solely focused on photographing the event. Now, with everything packed and ready, it's time to head to our location. It's been raining frequently in the afternoons a lot here in the Tampa Bay area, but the event I'm doing for the evening this week will be inside, so I won't have to worry about the rain this time. I covered a lot of events across U Tampa's campus this month, so you'll get to see all the behind the scenes of those events. Tonight, I'll be photographing the University of Tampa's Greek Night, which is where students can learn about the Greek organizations here on campus and how they can get involved. With my camera in hand, it's time to take some photos. With informational events like this one, or events that include some sort of networking, there's always particular shots I want to make sure I capture while at the event, such as signage, table decorations, people interacting with one another, or interacting with any items at the table that somebody could be visiting at like this student here who was looking at the sorority's photo album. Another shot I try to photograph is if the organization has anything to pose with, like either a sign or banner, such as some of these fraternities and sorority group photos where they're posing with their flag or an item like this organization's with their fan that shows the year their organization was founded. <laughs> I'll even ask if the organization has a hand sign that the group composed with like these two ladies here from Delta Sigma Theta. During events, I tend to overshoot a bit and in most cases, it's better to over photograph than under photograph. By doing this, you'll not only have more flexibility when it comes to editing your photos, but you might have captured a unique shot that you didn't expect to. Greek night now over, it's time to photograph my next event for the week and that's U Tampa Student Carnival. There were a lot of activities to photograph like the inflatable obstacle course, rope ladder climb, ski ball, axe throwing, yard pong, and even a funhouse maze. I dedicated myself at least 20 to 25 minutes to photograph each area of the carnival as I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of photos for all the students who participated in some of the carnival games as well as winning prizes at the registration table. I think the most fun I had photographing was the obstacle maze, as for most shots, I had to be almost inside of it. For my second favorite thing to photograph, I would say it was hard to choose, as overall I had a really fun time photographing the event, and it was definitely one of my most memorable shoots. But I will say that it was fun photographing the Jenga table, ski ball, and the funhouse maze. The photos of the carnival turned out great too, and were even featured on the university's Instagram promoting their week of welcome event. 
which is a week-long event with fun activities for students to participate in and meet fellow students as they get ready to start their academic journey here at the University of Tampa. As a former student who has attended Week of Welcome events in the past, I had a lot of fun and truly met some amazing people that ended up being lifelong friends. Capturing these moments for the next generation of students felt like coming full circle, allowing me to reflect on my own experiences while documenting theirs. After stacking up memories like a game of Jenga, it's time to photograph my final event, and that's Glow Jam. I attended Glow Jam in the past as well when I was a student, so it was a lot of fun returning as an alumni to photograph the event. Normally, this event is held outside like the carnival, but the Florida weather had other plans and we moved the event inside. The event consisted of a DJ, mini golf, and some DIY decorating acrylic kits. I would say out of everything at the event, the mini golf was the most popular and really drew a crowd. One of the students even tried to let me play mini golf with them, which I happily obliged to. You good at this? You good at putt -putt? I can try my best. Oh, no. <laughs> Before going back to taking some more photos. I mostly photographed mini golf at the event and put my focus on shots that highlighted the event in its entirety, as well as shots of the students playing mini golf and high-fiving each other. I took group photos of students at the event as well, with some even coming up and asking me if I could take a group photo of them. Overall, the event was just as much fun as the carnival, and the photos turned out great, and were also posted to the university's Instagram to promote Week of Welcome. Seeing my work featured on the UTampa social media platforms made me feel both honored and proud, knowing that I was able to contribute to displaying these special moments for the campus community. As I walk around capturing these events, it hits me how surreal this experience is. These are the same events I attended as a student, and now I'm back behind the lens capturing the moments I used to be a part of. It's a full circle moment, and being trusted to document these extraordinary events for my alma mater is something I don't take for granted. Being able to return to UTampa as a freelance photographer has been an incredible opportunity, and I'm truly thankful for it. It's not every day that you get to combine your passion with a place that means so much much to you. The chance to photograph these events and give back to the community that shaped me is something I genuinely cherish. I'm grateful for the trust the university has placed in me to capture these special moments. Each event reminds me of the memories I made here, and now I have the privilege of helping others preserve their own. It's fulfilling to know that my work contributes to the experiences of current students and alumni, capturing moments they can look back on and cherish for years to come. With all of my photo shoots wrapped up, I'll head back home to begin editing the raw images on Adobe Lightroom. I'll always shoot in RAW as that will preserve a good majority of the image data and that helps in the editing process when I need to either bring up highlights or darken shadows. One of the first things I do after importing my pictures into Lightroom is culling and going through all the photos I took on event day and removing the ones that were too out of focus. After doing that, I'll then mark the images that I like with a flag and highlight them in a green or blue color to let myself know that these are the final photos I'll be working on and will ultimately be the ones that I send out. Organization is key when developing a lot of photos, so it's important to have a solid workflow and organizational habits as it will help overall. As part of the editing process, I will even do a bit of masking if necessary so that I can bring out certain areas of the photo, such as the sky, or additionally sharpen the subjects in my photos so that they stand out from the background. In terms of editing these photos, I was required to do a simple correction edit of adjusting exposure, lighting, color, and photo straightening. Additionally to these corrections, I want to make sure each photo is at its optimal sharpness and that any photos taken in low light are noise-free, so I'll use Lightroom's AI noise reduction if necessary. Once I know my edits are of exceptional quality, I'll start exporting them to their own folder before sending them off to the university. Then it's on to my next set of event photos to edit, where I'll repeat the process. Your deliverable time is gonna vary based on the client's needs and the event type. Sometimes you have a day to send in the photos or even maybe a week, or there are other times you might be requested to send them to your client the day of while on location so they can post the event on social media in real time. Ultimately, flexibility and clear communication with your client are key to meeting expectations. It's not just about delivering quality work, but also ensuring that you're dependable, responsive, and adaptive to any situation. Unfortunately, a day in my life as a freelance photographer has ended. From planning the shoot, capturing the energy of each event, to editing the final images, every step reinforces how much I enjoy what I do. Returning to my alma mater both as an alum and as a photographer has been a meaningful experience. I look forward to continuing to document these moments for others 
others to cherish. It's a reminder of how far I've come, from attending these same events as a student to now being on the other side of the lens. I'm grateful for the opportunity to help preserve these moments for others to enjoy, and I look forward to the new projects and stories that await. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next video.